These equations are actually really important in engineering because they represent more complex motion, like the motion of a mass spring system under friction. Again, this class will just teach you techniques that prove the engineering equations that you will learn about in other classes. Differential equations is, in my opinion, the most important math class that you can take. Whether you're in mechanical, electrical, software, or architectural engineering, etc., there are a few math courses that we all have to take. They are calculus 1, 2, and 3, as well as linear algebra and differential equations. These are the math courses that you're going to take regardless of your engineering degree. There's obviously more math classes that you're going to have to take, but those differ based on your engineering major. So if you guys don't know me, my name is Jovan E.E.N. I have a master's degree in electrical engineering, undergraduate in optics engineering. I'm an optoelectronics engineering researcher. And this video is about how much math is really in engineering if you're interested in going in engineering or if you've done engineering or you're doing it right now, you want to know what courses do you have to take? I was electrical. I think he's mechanical, but let's get into this. And I'll talk a little bit more about them later in the video. The first course that all engineers have to take is Calculus 1, where we learn all about limits, derivatives, and integrals. The reason this is so important is because in engineering, we deal with a lot of moving systems and Calculus 1 allows us to model these systems and predict its motion. The second math course that all engineers have to take is Calculus 2, where we learn all about integration techniques and we also get introduced to the concept of series and sequences. Other than proving some equations, there really is no real world application for this course. Moving on, we have Calculus 3, or it's most commonly known as multivariable calculus, or as I like to call it, 3D math. That's because we deal with more variables in this course and we need to graph equations in 3D. For example, in this course, I would look at an equation like z equals x squared plus y squared and I need to be able to sketch it. And if you're curious, this is what it would look like. In this course, we're also going to learn about partial derivatives, which is like regular derivatives, but in 3D and with a lot more variables. So this is already spot on. If you're engineering, you have to take the three calculus. Usually you start your freshman year taking calculus one. However, some institutions like the one I went to, you have to take a placement placement exam to get into calculus one. If you don't get into calc one, you have to take, I don't even know what class will be before that. I don't know, maybe some algebra class or something. I don't know because I went straight into calculus one. But this is all spot on. Usually engineering, you have to take these courses. And an engineering degree is between what, 128 to 100 and somewhere between 128 to 140 credits. It's going to fall in between those. And the reason why so many credits is, is because of courses like this where you have to take them. I would advise taking Calc 1, 2, and 3 back to back in my opinion but what i did personally i didn't take calc one two and three back to back i could i took calc one calc two then i took linear algebra then i took calc three but it's really up to you and your advisor moving on in calc one we learned about integrals so this course takes it one step further and we start learning double and triple integrals at this point things can start to get a little complicated since there's a lot of visualization involved here but as you can see, so far this course doesn't have much real world application, but it gives us the tools we need to prove and derive important equations in engineering. Next, we take another math course to learn how to solve a certain type of equations called differential equations. These equations are actually really important in engineering because they represent more complex motion, like the motion of a mass spring system under friction. Again, this class will just teach you techniques that prove the engineering equations that you will learn about in other classes. Moving on, we have differential equations, is, in my opinion, the most important math class that you can take linear algebra is important if you're maybe a computer engineering but i believe differential equations is extremely important for electrical engineers and if you go to grad school you're going to have to know for your analysis you're going to have to know differentials you're going to have to know all that if you plan on going to grad school but yeah i didn't take differential equations actually until my senior year in college so you don't have to say calc 1 calc 2 calc 3 and then jump straight into differentials however it may make it a little easier since differentials deal with a lot of calculus linear algebra which is another math course but it's different than the previous ones we talked about because this one doesn't really involve any calculus this course will teach you topics like vectors matrix algebra and complex numbers it can also have some real world application that's because let's say you're working as a control engineer on an airplane's landing system you will need to create a linear model of that system and use linear algebra to be able to solve it. However, we usually have software that will take care of that stuff for us. The most common software is MATLAB. MATLAB is a programming software that you're going to definitely run into regardless of what engineering degree you choose to pursue. It can be annoying at first, but after you get used to it, you realize how useful it is because it can literally graph anything. 
So when you have to plot 3D That's functions, true. implement data, or manipulate a matrix, MATLAB will be your best friend. Without getting into too much detail, if you don't know what a matrix is, it's essentially just an array of numbers arranged in rows and columns. Before, we will solve a system of equations, but now we take the coefficients in the system of equations, put it in between these big brackets, and call it a matrix. You will learn methods of how to solve this, or even how to multiply two matrices together. The reason understanding matrices is so important is because it's the fundamental concept behind MATLAB. MATLAB actually stands for Matrix Lab. And that's because it uses the concept of matrices to be able to graph any function you want. All the math classes I mentioned so far are ones that all engineering students have to take. And to be honest, linear algebra is one of the easiest math classes, in my opinion, that you'll take in engineering. And relatively, relative, if you if you were to compare this class to other classes in terms of difficulty, this will probably be one of the easiest classes you can take too. But one of the things I wanted to touch on that a lot of engineers students should know is that you definitely need to know MATLAB or you need to know Python. Me personally, I don't use a lot of MATLAB. I do use a lot of Python and both are kind of interchangeable. Uh, but if you're a freshman or an underclassman or even a what junior or senior in college or high school, I would advise you heavily to learn MATLAB or Python. I say Python, but MATLAB will get the job done too. However, math majors will obviously have the most calculus courses. This is then followed by electrical, mechanical, and aerospace engineers. They will use calculus more than computer engineers, who use it more often than software engineers. So far, we looked at the five basic math courses that all engineering students have to take. We can now take it one step further by looking at more advanced math courses that not everyone has to take. Whether or not you will have to take it will depend on your engineering major and your university. These courses are statistics, partial differential equations, Fourier analysis, Laplace transforms, complex analysis, numerical methods, discrete math, Boolean algebra, and financial management. So let's look at this. Statistics, you don't have to take if you're EE, you don't have to take, I don't think you have to take any of these for undergraduate electrical engineering. Maybe a four-year analysis, depending on what college you go to, and maybe partial differentials, depending on what college you go to. But usually some of these are graduate level courses, like partial is graduate, four-year analysis is, depends on what college you go to, but you probably will take that your senior year or graduate school. Laplace transforms, I will say that's kind of graduate too. Boolean algebra, numerical methods, discrete math, financial management, and statistics, you don't have to take those for an uh, electrical engineering degree. And my undergrad was optical, so I didn't take any of those. Of these nine, personally, in my mechanical engineering undergrad, I only had to take seven. First, let's talk about statistics, which is a course that most engineers will have to take. You're going to start off by learning about concepts like probability. This includes understanding the odds of getting a certain number when rolling a dice, or the odds... You do take probability. Yeah, you definitely take that. I take that back. You take probability and statistics uh, for engineering. Odds of pulling a certain card from a deck. You will also learn how to quantify and manage data because you'll learn concepts like standard deviation, normal distribution curves, hypothesis tests, and confidence intervals. This course actually has some real life application in engineering. For example, let's say you're working on a design engineer on a brand new iPhone. You want to make sure that when this iPhone is dropped from like 10 inches or 25 centimeters, it doesn't break. So to design a drop test and to determine how many tests we need to do to officially make this phone drop proof, that's where the course statistics comes in. For example, if I test shot this phone three times and it didn't break or have any damage, is that enough to call it drop proof or do I need to drop it at least 8,000 times? The engineering major that uses this course the most is industrial engineering because they work a lot with designing and developing manufacturing processes. Moving on, we have partial differential equations. This course That's isn't as one. common as some of the other math courses since not all engineering majors have to take it. Yeah, partial is definitely graduate school. I previously talked about a different course called differential equations. Now this course builds on that. In normal differential equations, we deal with equations that only have two variables, but partial differential equations will deal with equations that have two or more variables. Partial differential equations is actually very useful in heat transfer, which means that this course is most common with mechanical, electrical, and aerospace engineers. Fourier analysis is a math course that teaches you how to take any function and represent it as a sum of multiple sine and cosine functions. For example, if I take a random sound wave like this, I can use Fourier analysis on it to be able to turn it into a function that's made up of a bunch of sine and cosine functions all summed together. This course actually deals a lot with waves and signals, and understanding this course will lead to another course called signals processing. Having a good understanding of the concept of this course 
will allow you to work with things like optics, sonars, radars, audio, and light. So this course is really important for electrical and computer engineers since they work a lot with signals. A common example of signals is the radio. So Fourier analysis allows us to get functions that we can use to deal with signals. Laplace transforms allows us to- Yeah, he's 100% right there. But I will say this, depending on what college you go to, they may not have a class specifically for Fourier analysis. Some colleges do, some colleges don't. Which is why I put the stretch between, like when you're in school, you take between 120 to 140, depending on what school you go to, you might not take this. However, in graduate school, you will definitely need to know for your analysis. And you may need to teach yourself for your analysis, or at least understand it on a basic level. Take complicated differential equations and convert them to relatively simple algebraic equations. This actually makes our lives easier when we're creating equations that represent how things move, rotate or experience heat. Next, let's talk about complex analysis. This is a class all about complex numbers. If you don't know what a complex number is, it's essentially a class that revolves all around the square root of negative one. You see, the square root of negative one is an imaginary number, but it's really important in this class and we represent the square root of negative one as i. You will learn all about functions that use complex numbers in this course, and it's very common among electrical engineering courses. Moving on, let's talk about numerical methods. Whenever you're dealing with equations and you can't solve it analytically or get an exact solution, this course comes in clutch. It basically teaches you a bunch of algorithms that you can do to approximate a solution to unsolvable questions. This course is the basis for how FEA software or graphing calculators work. They basically do a bunch of algorithms to approximate solutions. So it's nice to understand, but it's quite theoretical since you don't actually have to do these algorithms yourself once you graduate because the software will take care of it for you. Aerospace and mechanical engineers will definitely take this course. However, electrical and civil engineers will also learn concepts from this course. They may not necessarily have a whole course dedicated to teaching them these concepts, but they'll learn it within other math courses. Next, we have discrete. And I like the fact that he said that a lot of these courses, if you aren't catching the gist so far, are very related, especially in engineering, because more than more often than not, if you're an electrical engineer or what I was in undergrad was an optical engineer, you're learning electrical concepts. And I've got a master's in electrical, of course. But let's say you are a mechanical engineer or a mecha or a mechatronics engineer, you're going to learn concepts from electrical and mechanical, which will will turn you into a more specialized engineer to begin I mean to begin your career with your goal as a student is to become specialized in some areas so let's say you're taking mechanical the best thing you can do is learn concepts from another major so that you can be electromechanical or or a niched out optic mechanical you want to be specialized in your field and what I did was do optoelectronics. You can do something else. You can do aerospace and electronic. You can do aerospace chem, or you can just find a specific niche within aerospace and double down on it. But the whole point that I'm getting at is that a lot of these maths are related and you're going to learn little concepts from each as you progress throughout your engineering degree. In math, this course teaches you the foundation of algorithms and other concepts in the software space. So because of that, it's very common among software, computer, and electrical engineering students, and especially really, really common among computer science students. Let's move on and talk about Boolean algebra and digital logic. So in regular algebra, a variable can be any number, but in Boolean algebra, a variable can only be one or zero. This is actually really important when we're working with electronics. You see, in regular algebra, we do operations like addition, subtraction, or multiplication. But in Boolean algebra, we have different operations where we do things like and, or, and not. This course is really common with electrical, computer, and software engineering students. Some mechanical engineers may have to take this course as well, depending on your university. I personally have to take it. Finally, we have financial management. Honestly, I personally did not have to take Boolean, what is it called? Boolean algebra. In my courses, it was just implied that you knew Boolean algebra. For example, we had a um, electrical course during my graduate school that dealt with building transistors, using using and or and not variables and stuff like that. And it was never asked if we learned Boolean algebra. It was just under the impression that you knew how to do it. So if you ever go into transistors and um, building your own transistors and building adders, 16-bit adders, 8-bit, 4-bit adders, you're going to have to know Boolean algebra to some level. But it's not that complex. None of this is really that complex relative to the actual engineering material. 
So don't beat up don't beat up yourself if you don't understand it. But I'm gonna end the video here. The next math is financial management, and you don't really go over that in electrical, mechanical, um, optical. I don't even think you go over that in civil, but there probably are some careers that go over that. But if you want to know what math to use in your career, I can do a video on that as well. My name is Jovan Egan, and I'll see you on the next one.